Hey yo, what's going on guys? It's Fusion and welcome back to a new video. So today guys, I'm going to be showing you an updated tutorial on the best recording settings for OBS in 2019. So let's hop straight into it. All I ask is you guys leave a like and subscribe. So the first thing you guys do want to do is either go up to file settings or down here in the bottom right and go to settings. This is where all of your settings are going to be to change anything on OBS. The first setting I recommend changing is going to be theme. I recommend you change this to dark. There is some other ones too. If you like those better, hey, you can use whatever you want. But personally, my favorite is dark. Also, whenever you do change a setting, you do want to click apply to make sure it saves. If you just click cancel or okay, it will not save it. Now, we're going to hop over to the output tab. This is where everything happens. For you, it will say simple up at the top. You want to click and you want to change this to advanced. Next, you want to switch over to the recording panel. Here, you want to copy pretty much every setting you see here, but let me walk you through them. First, you want to leave this on standard because I don't even know what that does, but just leave it on standard. Recording path, you can set that to wherever you want. I recommend making a little folder for all your OBS videos and setting it there. Do not select generate file name without space, that's just not useful. Moving on to audio track, this is only useful if you use a thing like I do which I will show you guys in a second here, uh, but if you are planning on having a separate track for your microphone and your desktop, then I recommend checking one or two, or you could select two all the way up till six. Next is your encoder. This is based off of your PC. So for me at least, um, I know that my processor, it's the Ryzen 5 1600, is really fast and good. I have six cores. So I wanna use my processor versus my graphics card is a little bit on the lower end. It's a GTX 1050 Ti and it only has four gigs of VRAM. Now I know th this might be confusing to you, but the easiest way to know about your PC and what your PC to handle is to go to your Windows search bar, type in info and click enter. Then when you're here, you can just simply go down, find your processor, and it should tell you how many cores you have. And then for your graphics card, you can, you can simply come down to the bar down here, click task manager, go to performance, click on GPU and then it will tell you the name of this and also like how much GPU memory and stuff you have. Once you guys have looked all this up and determined if you have a good, a bad, whatever, basically you want to use whichever is better. If you have a NVIDIA graphics card, it will say NVIDIA NVNC. If you have a AMD graphics card, it will say something like AMD graphics. And then if you have an AMD processor, it will say X264. And for Intel, I'm not too sure. But you guys get the point. If you have a good processor, but a bad graphics card or vice versa, you wanna use the better one. So for me, the Ryzen is better than my graphics card. So I use that as my encoder. The encoder is basically what does the whole recording process. Next, we can skip all this stuff and come down to rate control. Rate control is pretty much at what like speed and process your video is kept at. You wanna keep it at CBR because CBR is constant bit rate. And a good number, if you want a really, really crisp, good video is about 15,000. You could even go up to 20,000 if you want to, but at this point, you'd probably be getting a lot of lag. At 15,000, I'd say it's pretty much pushing it to the limit for my computer. Next key frame interval. Set this to just two CPU usage. This is depending on your CPU. If your CPU is really bad and you don't want it to use that much of it at all, set it higher and higher and higher. For somebody with a better processor like me, I just recommend somewhere around fast or faster. Profile, you wanna to set to high, and then you're good here. You just want to click apply. Moving on to audio, this is pretty simple. The sample rate is just what sample your mic is, which you can find by looking up, I'm sure. Your desktop, your mic, and you're all set there. Video tab, this is pretty important. 
You want to make sure that your resolution is set right. If you have a 1440p monitor, you want to set that there. If you have a 1280, you want to set that there. For me, I have a 1080p monitor. The downscale filter. This is pretty much like a filter to make your video look even better. Uh, but bilinear is the worst, Lanskos is the best. I recommend to use either Bicubic or Lanskos. Uh, do not use bilinear, I don't recommend it. And if you're actually scaling down your resolution, which we didn't even talk about, uh, just don't use bilinear. Next, FPS. This is self-explanatory. If you wanna make a video in 10 FPS, choose 10. If you wanna make it in 60, choose 60. And from there, we're pretty much good. I mean, I guess the last thing I can tell you guys is in advanced. Um, I recommend setting the color space to 709 and the color range to full. And um, I'd say these are pretty much the best recording settings you can do. But yeah, these are like the best options you can do. Of course, you can go higher with the amount, but uh, I'd say this is the best way to do the settings. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to do that little um, like double track audio thing that I was talking about. Um, pretty much you just wanna right click down here on your audio devices and click advanced audio properties. When you're in here, you'll see all of your audio devices. For me, all I have is desktop and mic. And how I want it when I'm editing, I want my desktop to be in a different track than my mic. So, all you want to do is you want to make sure that in output and recording that you have audio track one and two here saved. So when your video is recording, it's recording two tracks. Then under advanced audio properties, you want to set which of these tracks are recording what. So for me, I have track one as desktop audio and track two as mic. You don't want to have either of them in the other one and you don't need to select any of the others. And that is how to have your audio in two different tracks, which can be really useful if you have an issue with something where you need to mute one or the other. Anyways, guys, I'd really appreciate a like, subscribe, and let me know if you want more OBS Studio tutorials. And anyways, guys, I'll see you later. And guys, before you go, Remember, God loves you. Go look up John 316 right now. Go check out the brand new Double F Fusion merch, available now at teespring.com slash stores slash fusion here.